Good morning, everybody. Wow, it's a crazy day out there. Raining like cats and dogs right now. And that has nothing to do with our psalm for today. Well, maybe it does a little bit. And if we're talking about nature, because Psalm 8, it's a, a really cool psalm. It's very short. It's only nine verses long. But it's also very unique amongst all the psalms in the psaltery in that it directly addresses God. You might say, wait a minute, we address God a lot in the Psalms. Well, we do, but normally there's a call to the people to join in praise, join in worship, join in prayer. No, this is just the psalmist just shouting right out to God. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Some Translation said, O oh Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. But sovereign is actually a better translation of that word. And not only does the psalm begin with that, it ends with those exact same words. O oh Lord our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And then, and then you get into the, the heart of the psalm and you see why the psalmist is saying that. Because he wouldn't be doing it right now. Now, this is before the sun rises in my neck of the woods, but it's pouring down rain. If it was a nicer day, he'd be out there looking at the sky and going, ah, look at the stars out there. Let's just, let's just look at part of it. When I look at the heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established... So he's set looking up in awe. And isn't that something that we need to do as people? Maybe we need to take more time and do that, you and I. Just stare at the sky in awe. But before we get there, we have to deal with a very strange verse. It's verse 2, where it goes, Out of the mouths of babes and infants you have founded a bulwark because of your foes, to silence the enemy and the avenger. If you have a really good Bible, it, it's going to have a footnote going, we have no idea what's going on in these verses, because we don't. It's often uh, called corrupted, the, the Hebrew in this text, because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense from what we know. There are words, there are uh, Hebrew constructions in the language that are just kind of mystifying. So you're going to find in different translations this verse translated different ways because just between you and me, we have no idea what that means. We just don't. So have some fun with it. But you're looking at the stars and everything that God's created and then you look at yourself. You look at yourself. What are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? In the scope of all this massive creation, this wondrous universe, who are we? Who are we? And we hear that same thing echoed in other places in Scripture too, but especially right here in a meaningful and powerful way. And then it goes on to say, you've made us just a little lower than yourself. You have made them a little lower than God. Some translations will have angels or heavenly beings. Why? It's because, once again, it's a little tricky thing to do with the Hebrew. We're not exactly sure. It's the word Elohim. And many times throughout the Old Testament, Elohim is a way of saying God's name without saying Yahweh. Um, or it's just the way the people referred to God at that particular time and place. It's the plural of God. So when you talk about gods, you're talking about heavenly beings and not who is God, if there's any supreme heavenly being. But also it's referred to referring to Yahweh in those same terms. So God himself, oh, we don't know. Again, it's a, it's a little tough. Just know that we're way up there on the spectrum. It's not like we're insignificant. We mean something. And God is there to give our lives meaning. And what is that meaning? 
We've been given dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen and the beasts of the field and the birds of the air and the fish of the sea and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. We are in charge. We have dominion. Be careful. Be careful with that word dominion because when you look in the Older Testament, you know what that refers to? A lot of times that's making reference to kings being given dominion over a land, over people to rule, and it's putting them in charge to take care of them, and they will be accountable to a higher being. Okay, now we understand. Now we understand. This is a beautiful psalm, but it's not one that we can take advantage of and say, hey, we are completely in charge. We can do what we want. No, we are put in charge of God's beautiful creation. Now, let's take care of it. O oh Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. Have an awesome day.